Now, Proverbs 3, verse 1 to verse 4. This is what the Bible says. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. That is the writer saying, my son, do not forget my teachings. But let your heart keep my commandments. Then he says, for the length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you. Very, very key here. Trusting in God, keeping his commandments, forgetting not his teachings, they will add days and years and peace to your life. Then he says, let not steadfast love and, and, and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart. Then he says, so you will find favor and good success in the sight of God and in the sight of man. Let's pray. Father, we are thankful. Today we stand in your presence in this service. And we are happy that your presence is with us. In our worship, we've given it to you. And now we ask you, Father, if you would, please come and speak to our hearts. Let your Holy Spirit guide us as we read this portion of scriptures and as we hear from you. Allow me to utter, allow me to speak, allow me to have the revelation. And allow me, dear Father, to just minister to your people in the next few minutes. And so bless us even as we read the word of God and as we study it together. In Jesus' name we pray and we say together, Amen. Amen. Be seated in the presence of God. Now, I don't know how I'm going to, con to do this in the next uh, probably uh, 20, 40 minutes or so. I'm looking at my clock here. It's very difficult when you stand on the pulpit and you have your mic and uh, you, are, you begin to speak. Allow me to do what I can in the best of I the best of what I can do. If I reach quarter way, it's okay. I'll pick it up. We've been talking about favor that brings good success. And I'll begin by introducing this subject by saying, rather telling you what favor is all about. Favor, by definition, is something done or granted out of goodwill. I think if I make it that short, it will make more meaning than me reading the whole definition. Something granted out of goodwill. You don't need to pay for it. In other words, it is not out of justice or out of remuneration. It is simply what is given to you, given to you out of goodwill. Somebody simply just loves you and gives to you something because he loves you. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 2 says, A good man obtains favor from the Lord, but an evil... But if a man of evil devices, the Lord condemns. So a good man will receive favor. And God doesn't give it to you just because you are, you are any special in any way. He gives to you out of goodwill. I came to discover that you will find in a family, there are ten people. But out of those ten people, one excels above the others. In a business, there are ten businesses, the same business. But you find the same business, in the same business, one is doing better than the other. Sometimes you discover in the church, we are all seated here, but some receive, others don't receive. Then you ask yourself, what is it that makes that difference? And I can simply conclude by saying favor. It's just the favor of God that does that. So favor is something that comes to you because it has been given out of goodwill. Of course, tied to other things which I'll be talking about here. I, we discovered when you were sharing the other Sunday, favor locates a good man. It's a good man that obtains it. And it has three things that are very key that we shall discover as we move on, especially as we shall be looking at the character whom I have picked for this study. Favor, number one, it breaks every protocol. What do I mean by this? It does not look at your past history. When God decides to bless you, he'll erase everything you've done in your life. And he'll bring you to the place where people will never know it was you that was that God has made. Number two, favor gives you God's extra from the ordinary that you have. You find people who are very ordinary, but in their lives, the Lord has endowed them with things which they would have never had if God himself never did it. And number three, favor makes you stand out. It brings you out of the crowd, and people begin to see you as the one that is favored. Why am I saying this? When we look at the story of a number of people in scriptures, and especially men that made a mark in the Bible, I have a few whom I can mention here. Men like Moses in scripture. Men like Noah in the Bible. Men like Joseph in the Bible. Men like David. Men like Daniel. 
men like uh, women like Esther, women like Mary. When I look at Noah, I see a man, an ordinary man. But this man does what no man has ever done. 120 years he's preaching, telling people about what is going to happen. And because of God's favor, this man comes out of a world of many, only him and his sons. I look at Joseph, this man whom God had prepared to go to Egypt. He was a slave, sold as a slave in that land. Several years later, the man climbs and becomes the prime minister of that nation. And it cannot be anything but favor. I look at Moses, a fellow who was born at the most difficult time in the lives of the Israelites. Thrown into the river, picked up by a little girl, brought up in the king's palace. And finally, this man becomes a deliverer of God's people. It can never be anything but God's favor. I look at David in the company of eight other sons of Jesse. The Lord is looking for one to anoint the second king of Israel. And we realize that out of the seven that were presented, God still says there is one more. This young man who is out there tending sheep, his father's sheep is brought, looking funny, looking very, in a, I mean, when you look at him, you can't imagine he can be. And the Lord says, anoint that one. It can never be anything but favor. Men like Daniel, taken into captivity, you know, in a foreign land, where there are aliens in that land. God is looking for somebody whom he would show himself through. And he elevates this man to become a, a, the prime minister, if I could put it, in the, in the present world, in the land of Babylon. That was the most po powerful economy or the most powerful kingdom that existed. I look at Esther, a small girl without father, without mother. You know, being elevated from, uh, from the Jewish, among, the, among the Jewish and the Hebrew children to become the queen of a land that was a heathen land. Then I look at Mary. The Lord is looking around for a woman out of all the women in the world that the Bible calls her Blessed Mary. You know, to make her womb to become the bearer of the Messiah. And out of the many, the Lord comes and tells Mary, you've been favored among all women. So there must be something very special about favor. I came to realize when you look at the lives of all these people, the word favor doesn't miss there. For Noah, the Bible says, and Noah found favor. When I end with Mary, it says, and Mary was favored among all women. This is the reason why I feel strongly that God would want wants to bless our people, bless us this morning with his favor. And that's why it is very important for us, besides all what we are, to find out what is it that is very key when it comes to the question of favor. And there is no other better person in scripture that can help us to understand favor in a much deeper way. Because when I look at these characters that I mentioned to you, there is something good about them. You know? Most of those men I've, I've, I've read to you, there were people who had accomplishments and good lives that we could look at and say perhaps it was their, their background that gave them favor. A man like Joseph, who was a very wonderful man. I can't find fault in him. Moses, the most humble, you know? I look at Moses, I see a very humble man. Daniel, a man above reproach. He couldn't even allow, allow, allow himself to be defiled by the food of Egypt. But this could give us a deception that favor comes to us simply because we are good came to realize it doesn't come to you because you are good. Sometimes God has to use certain people in scripture to bring us to the place where he can reveal what favor in, in fact is. And I couldn't find any better character in the Bible than a man by the name of Jacob. So we will be looking at the life of Jacob. I had done this before, you know, in my first sermon, and allow me to recap it again. Because this will give me a foundation next Sunday to talk about the other three elements of Jacob in a much easier way than me trying to remind you what we studied a few weeks ago. Now, if you look at Jacob, Jacob is one of the people in scripture whom nobody would have ever imagined that he can be or he can obtain favor from God. We preachers, and I've done that many times, I always used to look at Jacob as the most evil person before God made him. Because we look at the Bible and we realize there's a word which the Bible uses to describe this man. He was called what? A supplanter. I know that word is a bit difficult, eh? King James Version. Can you give it to me in uh, today's version? A what? A deceiver. A de How can God favor a deceiver? And we can look at the life of this man. If I look at his life right from inception, he is a man who lacked, who would have never been thought of that God can give him favor. The man when he was being born, he refused to allow his, first, his brother to come out first. Of course, we know there were twins, Esau and him. And the man, Esau decides to come out first. But instead of him allowing his brother to be born alone, he decided to hold the leg of his brother. And he says, we are going to be born together. So I normally say there were Siamese twins. Yeah? You, know this? you call them Siamese or what? Co-joined twins. 
Because the man de began deception right in the womb of his mother. Okay? The man becomes a favorite of his mother. He spends much of his time in the kitchen cooking and preparing meat and soup for his father. And at some point, he uses the same to deceive his brother. When the brother comes tired out of the fields where he was serving and working, the man, and, and he asks for soup, the man tells him, can I give it to you for nothing? And he mortgages his, his inheritance just for a cup of soup. He lost his inheritance. He also lost his inheritance. And to make even things worse, when the time came for the father to bless the firstborn, as it was the culture of that day and the habit of that times, this young man again decided to deceive his father. Went and killed an animal, put on the cloth of an animal, presented himself as his brother, a deceiver, and he ended up picking up the inheritance of his father. Ask yourself this question. If you were God, whom would you have favored, Esau or Jacob? In your thinking, I'm looking at you. Who do you think qualified for that? Now, why, does, why do you think Esau qualified for that? Because men look at the things or look at men from the outside. You know, we have a tendency to see what people are. And we tend to think that God will favor men or women who are like that. But I came to discover Jacob being the father of Israel, that would be the picture of the church. God wanted to paint a picture of who we are through the life of Jacob. So that he can show you how his favor is dispensed upon his people. If he had picked a man that was righteous in every point or in every way, we would have never understood what the favor of God is. So he picked on a man who is just like you. And I can tell you, you are just like him. Because when you look at our lives and you check us up, you realize some of us, if you go into our backgrounds and you check some of the places we've come from, we would have never been the choice of God. But today we stand because God favored us. And I believe even you, you stand this morning before, because God has favored you. In the book of Malachi chapter 1, verse, three to, verse 2 to verse 3, these are the words God was speaking to Israel. He says, I have loved you, says the Lord. But you say, how have I loved you? It's not Esau, Jacob's brother. He's now giving us that comparison. And he says, declares the Lord, yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated. I have laid west his hill country and left his inheritance to jackals of the desert. So to me, it simply tells me, God will love you despite who you are. And the favor of God can fall upon you despite who you are. But as the preacher was preaching this message of favor, he began by telling us in the book of Proverbs chapter 3, verse, three, verse 1 to 4, he said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. All that God demands of you, irrespective of what you are, is to put your faith in him. This morning, irrespective of what you are, if you put your trust in God, if you forget not the teachings that you are receiving here today, and if you keep his commandments, the Bible tells me he will lengthen your days and he will also provide peace for you and so you will obtain favor in his sight. Not only in the sight of God, but also in the sight of men. Allow me to go straight into the life of, jo the life, the, the life of Jacob to bring to you a few things which I strongly believe if we find the favor of God, these things will be revealed to us. And the first thing which I want to bring to our attention, and if I move a little bit faster here, is that favor is dispensed to us when we obey the commandments of God. That's the first thing. When we obey the commandments of God. Number two, as I've said in that scripture, when you trust in the Lord. And number three, when you keep his commandments. When you trust in the Lord, you keep his commandments, you obey him, the favor of God will not fail to come any close to you. And in the life of Jacob, like we have, uh, I, I have already spoken, this was the man least, least among all that would have obtained the favor of God. But how, did it, how is it that Jacob became the father of Israel? Why is it that today in every place in the church, we cannot go without mentioning Israel? We cannot go without mentioning Jacob because he's the father. By the way, the word Jacob means Israel. Why is it that today we are connected to the church through Jacob? It's because this man obtained favor from God and obtained good success like we have seen. Because favor doesn't walk alone. I came to discover favor has a, a twin brother, and that brother is called success. That's the reason why I began by saying, you look at yourself and you realize you have the same product, but the levels of success are different. You only need the favor of God for you to obtain that success. So what made Jacob to be a man that would obtain that favor from God? And I'll begin by saying, the first thing that made this man to obtain the favor of God is that, this man, is, is that the favor of God revealed God to him through his parental blessings. 
through his parental blessings. I'm trying to sum it up because if I go the way I went in the first service, I may not be able to finish what I'm talking about here. God revealed himself to Jacob through his parental blessings. And I'll explain parental blessings. Remember, if you keep my commandments, if you keep my commandments, then you will obtain favor. If you keep my commandments, you will obtain favor. Favor began in his life, the life of this young man, through the blessings of his parents. Despite who he was, he understood what the commandments of God were all about. And the man decided to obey the commandments of God. If you look into the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, I believe some of us know about the Ten Commandments. Okay? Ten com we have Ten Commandments in the Bible. Ten Commandments. How many know the Ten Commandments? Let me ask. Those are things we should have known even when you were... Ten co ten How many know the Ten Commandments? I did a survey this morning. I realized people just say yes, but they don't know. Can I, can I try again? Commandment number one? Number two? Number three? There was, there was, I, I, was, I was seeing on Facebook two people. There, was, there were two people who were being interviewed. A Muslim and a Christian. Someone was just interviewing them. So he gave a mic to the Muslim and he told him to, you know, to recite some scriptures. I don't know if some of you have seen that. And the Muslim child was able to recite more than five scriptures. Then he gave to the Christian boy. He couldn't even say even for God so loved the world. I discovered many of us, we say we are believers, but we don't even know. that We don't even know scripture. Anyway, that's not what I want to do today. Now, the Ten Commandments, there are five among the ten. Is it five or four? The first four among the ten, they point to God. The first four. The first four commandments, could you just flash them so that we can see? The first four, the first one says, thou shalt not have other gods besides me. Number two, now, the, the next one, you shall not make yourself carved images. The third one, you shall do what? You shall not bow down to them or, or serve them. For I, the Lord, your God is jealous God. And then the fourth one, thou sh eh? the fourth one, you shall not take the name of the Lord God in vain. Those are the first four commandments. First four. Oh, the next one. Can we go to the next one? The next one. The next one. The next one. You, the next one. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Those are four commandments which point to God. That point to God. So anybody who loves God will keep those four commandments. Alright? And then if you come to the fifth commandment, which I'm going to jump, fifth commandment, I will leave it first. You got the sixth up to the tenth commandment, four commandments, the fifth to the tenth commandment. You will realize those commandments point to man. They point to man. Can we go to that, that one? Honor, not, you, you can leave that one. Can you go to the next? You shall not do what? Murder. This points to who? Your neighbor. You shall not, number two, you shall not commit what? It points to who? Your neighbor. The other one you shall not still connects with, points to who? Your neighbor. And the, and the, the last one you shall not do what? Bear witness. It points to who? Do we have another one? And then the other one you shall not covet. What? So a, a, a disciple came to Jesus and he says, which is the greatest commandment? A disciple. What is the greatest commandment? Jesus told that disciple, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. That's commandment number one. Then he says, and the second is similar to this. He says, thou shalt love your neighbor as you love yourself. Then he says, in these two commandments, the whole law is fulfilled. To signify to me, there are only two commandments, love God and love your neighbor. But between these two commandments is another commandment, which is a silent one that many of us never pay attention to. And this is the commandment that draws favor in your life. That commandment is commandment number five. Can you flash it, my friend? That commandment says this. It, has, it comes from the blue, from nowhere. It says, honor your father and your mother that the day, your days may be long in the land which the Lord your God 
is giving you. Now, commandment number five points us to our parents. Where the Lord says, if you honor your father and your mother, what God will do, he will add to your life. R remember, we began with our key scripture. The key scripture was very simple. It said this. I'm just going back to the key scripture. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not forget his teachings. Keep his commandments. Then the days, the length of your days of your life will be long. And it will be added. So in this commandment number four, number five, it talks about our parental blessings. What made the difference between Esau and Jacob, if I come quickly, was that Jacob enjoyed parental blessings. He enjoyed parental blessings. He kept that commandment, if I could put it in simple language. He may not have deliberately known that he was keeping it. But the man actually walked in parental blessings. So the first thing that opens the door for you, favor in your life, is when you receive the blessings of your parents. I know this is not a gospel that is preached. Today we are in a world where the moment we become 18, I don't know about the West. In Africa, once you become 18, we regard you as a mature person, especially here. And people forget about their parents. Even some of us, before we reach 18, we are already disobedient to our parents. And we don't regard them in our lives. But one of the key things which I discovered in the Bible was that despite Jacob being a man who, in his past, nobody would have seen any good in his past, this young man took advantage of that parental blessing. And the favor of God just opened before him. Something which I strongly believe, if believers would walk in that commandment, believe me, the favor of God will be upon you. Why am I saying this? Let me go back to my scriptures here. Jacob, if you discover in the Bible, as I said, Jacob was this young man whom when you looked at his past, it dictated a person who was very bad in the sight of other people. I have mentioned to you, he took his, the, the birth rate of his brother. Number two, he took the blessings of his brother. Number three, he cheated on his brother. But this young man was a young man who understood a little bit, just slightly more than what some of us may think when we look at his life. Let me go through the scriptures here very quickly and show you one of the things that made this young man to receive the parental blessing. The parental blessing. His blessings began with, with the parental blessings. As I've said, going by the natural way of things and by his earlier character, nothing in life favored him. He never observed to have any good success in his life in the beginning. But towards the end, this is the man who became now the father of Israel. And he became now the father of all of us who are here by faith. This happened because immediately when the time of the blessings came, this young man received the blessings of his father. And this is how it happened. They were born too. We all know the story. I, it's Esau and Jacob. Born together. That, I mean, during those days, it was, it was not like today. Boys, girls and boys marrying at the age of 18, 19, 20. In the olden days, you could even marry at the age of 50, 60, 70. Abraham was with Sarah at the age of 75. I don't know when they got married. Anyway. But here at the age of 40, when they were 40 years old, these two boys, one of them, that is Esau, Decided to marry. Decided to marry. Esau. Jacob was not married. He decided to marry. And whom did Esau marry? If you go into the Bible, you realize, the Bible tells me in the book of Genesis chapter 28, I mean chapter 26, and verse 34 to verse 35, if we can turn there quickly. Chapter 26, verse 34 to verse 35. It tells me, and Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife and look at the people that Esau decided to marry, which is not a big deal for me here at the moment. I mean, I'm, I'm in, in, at this time. It says Esau was 40 years old when he took, help me, he took who? Judith, the daughter of Beryl, the Hattite, to be his wife. And Besmath, the daughter of Elon, the Hattite. Now, you may ask Pastor Mlema, what is special about this? Let's go back to Abraham. When God gave Abraham the promise, when he left the land of the Ur of the Chaldeans, because that is where my message comes from. Could you just flash that map, if you would, media, on the screen, to show you the promise God had given to Abraham. 
Then I will marry it into my last sentence as I close. If you look at that map, when God called Abraham to leave his father and his mother, the Bible tells me Abraham was living in a place called Haran. You, can you see Haran there? A place, this Haran, if you go to the dictionary today, is not the northern part of Iraq. Iraq. Actually, on the western side, the eastern side of Syria, the present Syria in the Bible. That's why the Bible talks about Assyrian in the book of Deuteronomy. So Abraham was Assyrian, living up there. Then God tells Abraham, leave that place and go to a land which I'm showing you. A land which I'm showing you. Abraham didn't question God. He simply left and began going to a land which, which, which the Lord will show him. And that land was down there where we call Israel. After crossing the stream of the Red Sea, I mean, of, of, of the River Jordan, where you can see Jerusalem, Bethel, Beersheba, that is the land of Israel. So Abraham leaves Hiran and comes down to the place where God had told him, I'm going to show you a land. Can we turn to the Bible, the book of, the, uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 12? We look at three things that God told Abraham here very quickly. Now, he speaks in chapter 12 and verse 1 to 8. And this is very key because this will help us to connect with favor. Chapter 12, verse 1 to 8. It says, now the Lord had spoken to Abraham. Are you there? Or I'm moving too fast. Okay. The Lord had spoken to Abraham and said, go from your country, from your kindred, and from your father's house to the land that I will show you. And this was the promise he gave Abraham. He said, I will, for, and, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. Now, these words were spoken when he was living here in Syria. God is telling, God, I will show you and I will make you. I will show you and I will make you. Then he goes on to say, and I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham went as the Lord had told him, obedience. And Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And Abraham took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran. And they set off to go to the land of Canaan. The land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan, and I love that. When they came to the land of Canaan. When they came to the land of Canaan. Are you still with me? It says, Abraham passed through the land of the place of Shechem to the oak of Moreh. At that time, the Canaanite was in the land. And the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, this is the word I want you to get now here. They have now come into Canaan. He says, the, a land I will show you. He is now into Canaan. Then God speaks, he says to Abraham, to your offspring. But by the way, it is in quotes. Can you see it? Is it a exclamation Max? He says, to your offspring, I will give this land. Now, this is now a promise that God is telling Abraham, you've come to the land, but this land, I will give it to your offspring. He was speaking about the future. Out of your lions, somebody will come that I will give this land to. So he told Abraham, and I will give to your offspring this land. So Abraham built there an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And this place was none other than a place called Bethel. If you go to verse 8, it says, From there he moved to a hill country on the east of Bethel, and pinched his tent, and Bethel on the west, and Ea on the east. And there he builded an altar to the Lord, and called upon his name. So God had given Abraham a promise. And the promise was, this land which you are in, I will give it to your offspring. Now who was this offspring God was giving to? Abraham decides to have a, a child. And we know the child of Abraham was Isaac. So we know that. Isaac, ab after Abraham had died... I mean, before Abraham died, God told Abraham, this land, I will give it to you. He blessed Isaac. In other words, he passed the inheritance to Isaac. Isaac was the only son Abraham had. Of course, he had others. Several. Who are not in the Bible? Not, even some are not mentioned in the Bible, by the way. There's a place where it says, and he had even other children who, who are not mentioned in the Bible. But the child of the promise, the child of the favor, was this young man called Isaac, who was born out of Sarah, who was with Abraham from the time they left the land of Haran. 
So Isaac inherited the promise which God had given to Abraham. Now a time has come when Isaac is old. And I'm coming to my message here. Isaac is old. I'm talking about favor. He is old. And Isaac has how many children? Two. Help me here. Esau and who? And Jacob. Who among these two should take the promise? Now if you were the one, whom do you have given? To Esau. He would have given it to Esau. But Esau, I'm sorry to say, and this is the, the tragedy of many of us, Esau never understood how to get that promise. He, he missed on the point. And the point is, my son, obey my commandments. The point was, my son, keep my trust in me. Esau never got to, to the point where he would have understood how he could keep, he could obey the promises of God. Why am I saying this? Because when it came for a time for Abraham to get a wife for his son, Isaac, what did Abraham do? Please help me. What did he do? Did Abraham allow himself to be indulged with the people who are in the land of Canaan? No. Abraham sent his servant all the way back to that place called Haran. And he told him, get a wife for my son. He went back to the people who are his own people. And he picked Rebekah from among them. And brought Rebekah to Isaac to be the wife of Isaac. It is out of Rebekah and Isaac that we are now finding Jacob and Esau. Are you clear up to there? So when now these two boys, Esau and, 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 and Jacob, are about to marry, what does Esau do? Let me show you what Esau does. Esau now, as we have read in that scripture, chapter 26 and verse 44, in verse 40, 34 to verse 35. The Bible tells me, if you can take me there just a little bit quickly, it tells me when Esau was 40 years old, he took Judith, the daughter of Berry, the Hattite, to be his wife. And Beth Bethmath, the daughter of Elon, the, uh, the Hattite. Let's go to verse 35 and see what happens. And the Bible says they did what? What did they do? They made life bitter for Isaac and Rebecca. Because you know, at that time, these two women were women of that land. And I want to make an, a, 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 a point here. There is a difference between a covenant person and a, a person who is not part of the covenant. There is a difference between a believer and a person who is an unbeliever. I know this is not the gospel which is being preached in the church today. Today we are telling people, come the way you are. Which is fine. But as you come, Jesus loves you. As you come, we are preaching the favor of God will be upon you to make you a believer. It was not in the custom of Abraham and Isaac for them to indulge themselves with the inhabitants of the land of Canaan. This young man could not listen to his father. I believe that. He could not listen to his mother. Imagine he even marries two women at the same time when he was 40 years old. And both the women were women in the land of that land of Canaan. If I can translate it today, we have believers and we have non-believers. We've got people of faith and people, people are not of faith. Today we've got people who believe in God and people who don't believe in God. When you become a believer, God expects you to walk in his commandments. There is no, there is no, there is, there's a scripture which says you cannot be equally yoked with unbelievers. That's the mistake which this man did. Thank God for Jacob, because Jacob never married. Jacob was just there. And this young man, Jacob, understood how to tap in his parents. I'll tell you why. The young man spent much of his time with his mother. You know, mother was at home most of the time. And every time the mother, he even knew the food which the father was, was eating. Remember when the father sent the, the, in, in, in Esau and he told him, go and get a, 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 a lamp for me. And cook it in the manner that pleases me. The mother was listening. The mother turned to him and he told him, you know what? Your, your, father, your father is going to give the inheritance to your brother. Go and get a, 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 a lamp and I will cook it in the way your father likes it. And she ended up giving this young man the inheritance of his brother. But that's not my point. My point is that the Bible tells me 
if you take me to the scripture that I've just read there, the Bible tells me that this gentleman, the wives of this gentleman, they made the life of Rebekah and the life of who? Isaac, very, very bitter. To an end that if you go to verse chapter 27 and verse 46 to verse, 40, verse 46 to verse 47. Genesis 27, 46, 46 to 47. It says, then Rebekah said to Isaac, read that with me. He says, I loot my life because of the Hittite women. If Jacob marries one of the Hittite women, this, like this, one of the women of the land, what good will my life be to me? And you know this is now happening when he has already taken the inheritance of his father, I mean of his brother. He has cheated his brother, his father, he has given him the inheritance of, uh, of uh, Isaac, and Isaac is, um, no, the inheritance of Esau, and Esau is now planning to kill Jacob, the mother of Ahad. Again, she goes to Jacob and tells him, listen, your brother is planning to kill you. Because he has said, as soon as your father dies, he will kill you. Okay? So what did, did Rebecca do? Rebecca now decides now, we must have a plan for you to run away from your brother. You must go back to where I came from. You stay there, just stay there. And if you stay there and your father is dead, take time and be there until the anger of your brother has already been cooled down. And then you can now come and inherit the land. Unfortunately, the good thing about uh, favor, God even didn't allow this man to die. Jacob never died. I mean, uh, in, in Isaac. Isaac lived for another 20 years until this gentleman came back to signify to me the favor of God supersedes anything. It supersedes even the plans that we have. The favor of God goes ahead of us, even before us. So when this gentleman learned, I mean, I, mean, I mean the mother learned, that he was going to be killed by his brother, she quickly went to the father. And she become, began evoking the scripture that I've read here. Telling the father, listen, we cannot allow our son to marry like the way his brother has done. Because what will life be to me if he marries another Hittite woman? Then the mother decided now to call the father and tell the father, let us allow our son to go all the way to Haran, the place where I was brought from, for him to marry a wife from there. But listen to me. The plan wasn't for him to marry. The plan was for him to run away from his brother. That was the plan. But you may say, Pastor Mlema, how, does, how, how is that linked to favor? I'm simply telling you that when you honor your father and your mother, listen to me, when you honor your father and your mother, it will be well with you. It may not matter your background. It may not matter what you've been. But the moment you put honor on your father, you put honor on your mother, the moment you begin to respect those whom God has brought, has brought as your leaders in your life, believe me, favor begins to flow. And this is how this young man was able to get the key for his first miracle in his life. The father had to call him. I'm just paraphrasing. Let me just cover it up. The father called him. You know, I preached for many years. And sometimes preachers, we preach lies. We do. We preach lies. And we don't know we are preaching lies. I preached for many years. I kept telling people, you know, Jacob ran away from his brother. I don't know how many of you believe that. Ran away from his brother. He fled from his brother. But I realized this man never fled. He never ran away. Actually, this man was sent with the blessings of his father. Because of favor. God knew he will be the father of many nations. God knew this young man would be the one in whom the whole world will be blessed. This is why you are blessed here because of this man. So when this thing happened, the mother and the father decided to send this young man to Hiran. In the, in the mind of Isaac, he's telling him, go and marry. But in the mind of Rebecca. What is Rebecca telling the boy? When you reach there, stay. This is why you will see, next time we'll be talking about this. He wasn't even in a hurry to propose. The young man wasn't in a hurry to propose. He stayed for one month, he has not proposed. Because if he proposes, he has proposed now, and is given the wife, what happens? My time is up. I saw Pastor Joyce looking at her clock. 
and I realize now mine is up. Let me just stop now. Listen. Hear me. Are you listening to me? It was the favor of God that made this man to go where? To Haran. And this favor was because of parental blessings. That's what I'm talking about. Parental blessings. Can I read just this scripture? Then I stop. Joyce, can I do that? All right, let me read this scripture. All right. Let's go to this one. Genesis chapter 28, verse 1 to verse 5. 28, verse 1 to verse 5. Are you there? 28, verse 1 to verse 5. It says this. Then Isaac called Jacob. The mother has already complained. We don't, uh, I mean, she, she has already expressed her, her, her reservations on Jacob marrying from that land. And the question is not even marriage. The question is that the mother loves Jacob so much that he wants Jacob to be safe. And Jacob has already made the life of his father bitter. So, who? Esau, sorry. Esau has made the life of his father Isaac, Dita. So they have had a conversation. What does he do? Isaac called Jacob and blessed him. That's what I like there. Blessed him and directed him. Can you put it in King James? I love it in King James. It says here, he called him and he says, go to Paradam to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, where the mother had come from. And take thee a wife from there of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. Now, see now where favor comes. And this is now the point that I'm talking about here. He said, and you read with me. He says, and what? God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people. What was he talking about? What God had told Abraham where? In, para, in Haran. When Abraham was leaving Haran. You remember God telling him, and I will make you a great nation. And I will make you a blessing. When he was leaving. Now he's beginning to evoke the blessings of Abraham on Jacob. Esau has no idea he's losing it. And it doesn't end here. In verse 4 he says, and give thee. Can somebody help me here? Give thee what? The blessing of, now if you check, it's not blessings. It is the blessing. Means the whole package that I had given to Abraham. I am now giving it, may the Lord give it to you. And he didn't end there, he says, to thee and to thy seed. Then he says with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land where win, where, where, where in thou art a stranger, which God gave to Abraham. Verse 5. Verse 5. And Isaac sent away Jacob. And he went to Paradaram and to Laban, the son of Bethuel, the Syrian. No, not the Syrian there. The brother of Rebekah, Jacob's and Esau's mother. Now, I, Pastor Joyce, maybe you can do a bit of research here because you're a theologian. I asked myself several questions. Did he send Jacob with a servant. Is there anything in the Bible about that? No. Why? I'm sure even the mother might, might have told him, let him go alone. Because the mother knew the agenda. The agenda was when you reach there, stay. But the key and the most important thing, the man had already received the blessing of Abraham. And this happened because of favor. Because of favor. You will never find in the Bible again where this blessing is pronounced upon Esau. It's not there. This, this gentleman now carries that blessing with him. And he lives with it and goes to the land of Laban where he lived for 20 good years. And believe me, if you study the life of this young man, as we shall trust God to study, you will realize when he was coming back after 20 years, he was exactly what God had told Abraham he would be. A great nation. And the story of Esau 
ends there. He becomes the father of Edom. Edomites, whom we read in the Bible, scattered all over those areas. It is now Jacob who comes back to inherit the land which God had given to Abraham. Indeed, to become a great nation, they had to go to Egypt and then come back as Israel to take that land which God had given to Abraham. May God help us to remember our parental blessings. Don't ignore your parents. That's the point I'm, tell, I'm telling you here. Do not ignore the commandments. Do not ignore to trust in the Lord your God. I strongly believe if you keep the commandments of God, if you obey what God tells you to obey, if you walk in the status of God, I promise you, favor will follow you. Let me stop at that. We'll pick it up next time. For the sake of communion, let me stop at that. God bless you. Let's stand up on our feet. We close. Father, we are grateful for this morning. Thank you for your word. I pray that you will help us. I pray that you will teach us. I pray that, Lord, you will open our ears. You will open our eyes to know what we ought to do to receive the favor that you have promised us in your word. Many of us, Lord, we have not obeyed your commandments. Many of us, we've ignored the smallest of the things that you have commanded us in your word. Sometimes we've taken things for granted. We have walked like the world. We have not been careful, like the scripture has told us, to obey every single word that you have, you have taught us in your word. May this morning be a morning where our eyes will open to trust in you, to love you, to walk in your statutes, and to believe you, Lord. May the blessing of Abraham that you gave Jacob be our blessing today. That we shall inherit the promise that you gave us through our Lord Jesus Christ. I bless your people and I bless everyone who has been here present in this service. In Jesus' name, I pray and I believe. And together we say, Amen.